The War on the West by Douglas Murray is uh, the, the book from the author. Uh, now, I thought The Madness of Crowds was okay. Uh, the Madness of Crowds is about cancel culture, and the book is basically just full of examples of it, but doesn't dive too deep into it. However, this one's more interesting. This one's more about the demonization of Western culture. Um, there's some really interesting topics in this book, and he definitely uh, gives the examples, but dives a little bit deeper into what the war on the West means. So, a refresher, the first chapter is on race, uh, about mainly about um, arguing against uh, the extreme form of uh, of uh, the extreme form of critical race theory and the, and the sort of overzealousness that can happen uh, where people start seeing racism when it's not there or using it as a blanket term. Uh, an example would be the there was a college dorm where uh, a black girl opened up her, her, her door into the hallway and there was a shoelace and she thought it was a noose and it was like some sort of racial attack but it turned out so, someone lost that shoelace so whoever found it dangled it from a ceiling fan or something in order to give it back to the owner. It had nothing to do with race but people were like freaking out and stuff like that. And then the most extreme case would be Jussie Smollett obviously. But uh, this one really does sort of uh, nitpick at the, the sort of craziness that people go to to order to be um, you know, for that clout, you know, if you're not with us, you're, you're against us, you know, you have to be anti-racist, you have to be less white, you have to, you, it's not right to be white, you know, you, we want you to tamp down your whiteness and control your privilege and you start getting to the point where you're almost racist against white people because you're, you know, getting into people's faces and telling them that, you know, just because you exist and you're white, you know, you're, you're, if you're not with us, you're against us. You need to be anti-racist. You need to, you know, fight hate and all that sort of stuff where you make people uncomfortable just because they exist, you know, like a white person isn't automatically racist because they're white and they have nothing to do with uh, racism, but you, you sort of like put them on the spotlight. It's, it's a really interesting chapter, a great hook for the first opening of the book. Then we have an interlude with China talking about how they're, they like to criticize the West a lot, and whenever, you know, people criticize China, they like to, what's the word, uh, block things, you know, like when um, John, actor John Cena mentioned Taiwan wasn't part of China, he had to literally apologize in Chinese in order for his movie not to get banned in China. So China, you know, they're very critical when people say bad things about China, but they like to, you know, sing a lot of mud. But then they, you know, block movies and they censor a lot of stuff. And then the treatment, the mistreatment of the Uyghurs, the Muslim Uyghurs, they're really bad stuff. And, you know, they, they like to often poke fun at America and North America in general. But, you know, they, they shouldn't throw stones when they live in a glass house. And then we move on to history, which is another interesting chapter. History mainly talks about how people try to paint a lens on a certain person or even miskew. There's a lot of just miskewed uh, bad research, you know. For example, uh, one of the examples in the book is uh, Jane Austen. In one of her books, uh, the main character's uncle owns slaves, and he's. it's a satire segment where it's supposed to be hilarious because the uncle can't control his slaves or something, and the main character does not like that. But because slaves were mentioned in the book, um, people were trying to buy, boycott Jane Austen because the slaves were just in the book. And another example, uh, not in the book, but um, just just to show that the culture has changed, uh, Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings. It is a fantasy novel, the first of the Stormlight Archive. One of the characters is Kaladin Stormblessed. He is a slave. He has a, a brand on his head, you know, and um, he's a slave and he has to like carry bridges with other people. That was written in 2011, so there's no backlash. But um, Emily Wenzhou, a uh, Chinese author, wanted to write a young adult novel called Blood Air, and it had slavery in it too, and people criticized the early drafts of the book before it even got published, and uh, they basically boycotted and canceled her before she even got a chance to write her book, and she had to basically censor herself. Now, she also got accused of plagiarism. I, I haven't really looked into it too much, but it just seemed kind of like weird that she had to apologize for her book, and she basically got censored and canceled before she even got to, you know, have, have, a, have at least published first, and then at least, you know, face the backlash as it comes instead of being backed down and having to delay the and edit stuff out. You know, it's it's almost like, you know, who are they to tell you not to write something? You know, what if you wanted to do uh, like a Holocaust parallel and they just said, you're not allowed to do that. 
you know, it, it makes me uncomfortable. You just don't, you don't get to write that at all. That's a really dangerous, you know, sentiment, you know, and, and, you know, Way of Kings came out in 2011, so that was a good 11 years ago, but it just goes to show how much it's changed now. And there's other books that have slavery in it, like uh, Octavia e. Butler's Kindred and books like that. Uh, there's a few others I forgot. And then uh, we got a Reparations. It was a small chapter about talking mainly about like how a lot of um, there, there have been some talk about uh, giving money to descendants of slaves and like how it, there's no real like way to like make that work because how would you do that for starters? How would you like um, match the amount for one thing and what, what if you're like a descendant of, of just your mother was a slave and um, you know how long would that go for and would there be a limit and does that mean racism is over if a whole bunch of people get money for for reparations of the past it's, it's kind of a, it's a subject that's it's always talked about but never could probably never be fully realized it was a really interesting interlude uh, religion um, this chapter I don't really remember too much about it but it was mainly about like how if you insult the Quran or you burn the Quran holy war but you're allowed to burn Bibles and, and make fun of Catholicism and, and you know poke fun at all the different um, Western cultures and religion that's fine but if you you know do anything to a foreign religion it, it, it could mean you know the end of it could mean terrorist attacks and things like that. So that, that was a pretty interesting mini chapter. Um, then there's one called Gratitude. I don't remember what this one was mainly about, but I think this one was mainly about talking about how Western cultures have brought in a lot of uh, advances in medicine and uh, science and things like that. We always have a lens where we, we always try to focus on the bad and, and never the, the positive stuff. And that's kind of a mindset that's pretty bad because if you're one of those people that always looks at things from a you know we need to do better all the time and you never never thankful of the, the positive contributions that western society has has brought over the years like the british empire ending slavery over the, around the world and spending a lot of their own money over the course of six decades to stop slavery in its entirety in the entire world um you know you're just living a sort of uh life that's just cannot be fulfilled it can you can never be happy because you're never going to end you know inequality and racism basically and then the last chapter was the most boring he saved the, the worst chapter for last which was kind of a a bad thing it's culture he mainly goes into the um racial sort of uh divide in orchestras like they don't have the what's it called the the quotas there, there you know a lot of people said like there's not black people in orchestras and maybe it's because there's not enough black students trying to get into music so you should try to boost music programs throughout America but you know if, if black people don't want to become musicians and, and play classical music then they don't want to and so they try to do like a blind thing there were people do blind auditions where you just hear them play and then that still wasn't enough and they criticized that and you couldn't make people happy and then uh, they, they, there's some really interesting stuff about like how the Western way of doing music, like the something about the scale or something, the, the way you do music, you can copy Indian and Chinese and, and do your own interpretations. But if you use their, like, um, their basis for whatever, you wouldn't be able to copy Western music. And it, it was really interesting. It, it was a little bit interesting, but I didn't like the how we saved this chapter for last. It was the most least interesting for me because I don't really care about orchestras. But uh, this book was definitely a, a much more deep dive than um, the cancel culture in Madness of Crowds. This one was a really interesting book. I really enjoyed it, and I give uh, The War on the West a 4 out of 5.